Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm instructor Jim Pytel, and today we're going to take a brief look at a sample set of electrically controlled hydraulic systems making use of various timer functions to execute a single cycle reciprocation action incorporating a dwell period. This lecture operates under the assumption you've watched the single cycle reciprocation with limit switch and timers lectures, all available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet, or only dimly recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. If you recall, a single cycle reciprocation action is one complete extension and full retraction of a hydraulic cylinder. A single cycle reciprocation with dwell period behaves similarly with one notable exception. Rather than immediately retracting upon reaching the limits of travel, the cylinder remains extended for a measurable delay. This delay is known as a dwell period and such a system incorporating a dwell at the limits of extension could be used to not only press or bend some workpiece, but also hold and compress it for a required amount of time. One such implementation of a single cycle reciprocation action with dwell period makes use of a multifunction timer performing the on delay function or delay on energize. It may be helpful to review the behavior of an on delay timer before we continue. A timing diagram of a timer executing the on delay function would look like this. When the controlling input, in this case the coil, is energized, the associated contacts do not immediately switch to their opposite states, but rather maintain their deactivated states for a measurable delay. Only after the predetermined delay period has elapsed do the contacts change states. When the controlling input is de-energized, the associated contacts immediately return to their deactivated states. Let's say this cylinder is being used to compress a mold that needs to extend the cylinder and maintain compression for a period of 30 seconds while the workpiece cures. The timer executing the on delay function in rung 4 is set for 30 seconds. Note the use of the normally closed time open contact TR1A associated with timer relay TR1 in rung 1. Additionally, note the use of a variable displacement pressure compensated pump that destrokes upon reaching the firing pressure. This type of pumping system ensures that the cylinder will remain extended with the requisite force at the limits of extension in high pressure standby mode, yet it would reduce flow to that necessary to overcome leakage. Let's walk through this system and examine how it works. An operator initiates the single cycle reciprocation action incorporating a dwell period by pressing start. This energizes the coil of regular control relay CR1. Its associated contacts immediately change states. Contact CR1A closes and establishes a holding circuit, allowing an operator to release the start button. Contact CR1B closes and energizes DCV1 sole A. DCV1 shifts to the straight through position. Pressurized flow enters the cap end and the cylinder extends. At the limits of extension, the mold strikes limit switch 1. Via the now closed LS1 contact, the coil of timer relay TR1 is energized and the timer begins the 30 second countdown. While the countdown is ongoing, note that the normally closed time open contact TR1A in rung 1 remains in the deactivated closed state and the coil of control relay CR1 remains energized. A holding circuit remains engaged as does the energized state of DCV1 sole A. The valve would therefore remain shifted into the straight through position and the cylinder would remain extended. The pressure compensated pump would reach the firing pressure and de-stroke to the high pressure standby state. The mold is being compressed with the requisite amount of force and remains so while the timer executes the required 30 second countdown. After 30 seconds has elapsed, the normally closed time open contact TR1A opens and de-energizes the coil of regular control relay CR1. Contact CR1A opens and removes the holding circuit. Contact CR1B opens and de-energizes DCV1 sole A. The spring offset DCV1 returns to the cross connect position. Pressurized flow enters the rod end and the cylinder mold retract. Upon reaching the reset region of LS1, LS1 resets into the open position which de-energizes the controlling input of timer relay TR1. Contact TR1A is reset to the closed position, and when the cylinder fully retracts, we've returned to the de-energized start state of this system. Note that the stop button would de-energize both DCV1 sole A and the timer and return the system to the de-energized start state. 
In summary, the incorporation of a timer executing the onDelay function, a normally closed time open contact TR1A, allows a regular single cycle reciprocation system to execute a desired dwell period at the limits of extension rather than immediately retracting. Ordinarily, I'd say, that's all folks, and sign off. However, just to show you how versatile and useful timers can be, let's examine two subtly different variations of single cycle reciprocation systems incorporating a dwell period, making use of different timer functions. By all means, feel free to pause the lecture at any time and examine these systems to see if you can predict how they work. These make great practice exercises for those just familiarizing themselves and learning to differentiate between different timer functions. Here's another implementation of a single cycle reciprocation system incorporating a dwell period, only this time making use of an off delay timer, the opposite of what we just examined. Let's assume the cylinder needs to again fully extend and maintain compression for a period of 30 seconds. Note the normally open time open contact tier 1A in rung 4 would open 30 seconds after the timer controlling input was de-energized. It may be helpful to review the behavior of an off-delay timer before we continue. This particular timer executing the off-delay function necessitates an additional auxiliary controlling input, illustrated as a coil with three terminals. A coil from A1 to A2 must be continually energized for the timer to properly function. The auxiliary controlling input now serves as the initiation signal for the off-delay function, whereas the coil simply serves to power the device. A timing diagram of a timer necessitating an auxiliary controlling input executing the off delay function would look like this. Assuming the timer is powered up using the A1 to A2 connections, when the auxiliary controlling input is energized, the associated contacts immediately switch their opposite states, just like a regular control relay. However, when the auxiliary controlling input is de-energized, the associated contacts do not respond immediately but rather only after the predetermined delay period has elapsed do the contacts return to their deactivated states. Note the de-energized start state ensures that the internal circuitry of the timer relay is powered up. An operator initiates the single cycle reciprocation incorporating a dwell period by pressing start. This energizes the coil of control relay CR1 and its associated contacts immediately change states. Contact CR1A closes and establishes a holding circuit allowing an operator to release the start button. Additionally note the timer relay controlling input is energized and its associated contacts immediately change states. Contact tier 1A closes. DCV1 sole A is energized. DCV1 shifts to the straight through position. Pressurized flow enters the cap end and the cylinder extends. At the limits of extension, the mold strikes limit switch LS1. The LS1 contact opens and de-energizes the controlling input of timer relay TR1 and the coil of control relay CR1. Contact CR1A immediately opens and removes the holding circuit. In contrast, normally open time open contact TR1A executing the off delay function remains closed and the timer begins the 30 second countdown. While the countdown is ongoing, note DCV1 sole A remains energized. The valve therefore remains shifted into the straight through position and the cylinder remains extended. The pressure compensated pump reaches the firing pressure and de-strokes to the high pressure standby state. The mold is being compressed with the requisite amount of force and remains so while the timer executes the required 30 second countdown. After 30 seconds has elapsed, the normally open time open contact tier 1A opens, which de-energizes DCV1 sole A. The spring offset DCV1 returns to the cross connect position Pressurized flow enters the rod end and the cylinder retracts. Upon reaching the reset region of LS1, LS1 resets into the closed position. When the cylinder fully retracts, we again return to the de-energized start state of the system. As previously, the stop button would de-energize DCV1 sole, depower and reset the timer, even during an ongoing off delay period, and return the system to the de-energized start state. Note how by subtly altering our ladder logic, principally the deactivated state and location of the limit switch within the ladder logic diagram, and making use of a totally opposite timer function, we successfully created a system that performed the same single cycle reciprocation action, incorporating a 30 second dwell period. Here's yet another implementation of a single cycle reciprocation system incorporating a dwell period, 
only this time making use of a positive edge triggered one shot. Let's assume the cylinder needs to again fully extend and maintain compression for a period of 30 seconds. Note this simple ladder logic does not require a limit switch. Recall that the limit switch in the two previous examples was the prime feedback mechanism used to notify the system it had reached the limits of extension and the system needs to initiate the required dwell period. This particular system does not include this level of feedback and for this reason the positive edge triggered one shot's delay must be modified to account for the travel time to the limits of extension as well as the desired dwell period of 30 seconds. Let's say the travel time to reach full extension is a repeatable 5 seconds. The timer executing the positive edge triggered one shot is therefore set to execute a 5 plus 30 or 35 second positive edge triggered one shot upon receipt of a positive or rising edge at the timer controlling input. Let's assume this is a non-retriggerable one shot. It may be helpful to review the behavior of a positive edge triggered one shot before we continue. This particular timer executing the positive edge triggered one shot function necessitates an additional auxiliary controlling input illustrated as a coil with three terminals. The coil from A1 to A2 must be continually energized for the timer to properly function. The auxiliary controlling input now serves as the initiation signal for the one shot function whereas the coil simply serves to power the device. A timing diagram of a timer necessitating an auxiliary controlling input executing the positive edge triggered one shot function would look like this. Assuming the timer is powered up using the A1 to A2 connections, when the auxiliary controlling input receives a positive or rising edge, the associated contacts temporarily assume the opposite activated state. After the one shot period is elapsed, the associated contacts return to their deactivated states. Being non-retriggerable, this timer would simply ignore additional positive edge triggering events experienced within an ongoing one shot. Note the de-energized start state of this system ensures that the internal circuitry of the timer relay is powered up. As previously, an operator initiates the single cycle reciprocation incorporating a dwell period by pressing start. The controlling input of timer relay tier 1 experiences a positive or rising edge. The positive edge triggered one shot is headed downrange and an operator can release the start button without the necessity of a holding contact. Contact TR1A closes and energizes DCV1 sole A. DCV1 shifts to the straight through position. Pressurized flow enters the cap end and the cylinder and mold extend. Five seconds into the ongoing 35 second positive edge triggered one shot, the cylinder and mold reach the limits of extension. Contact TR1A remains closed for an additional 30 seconds maintaining the energized state of DCV1 sole A. The valve remains shifted into the straight through position and the cylinder remains extended. The pressure compensated pump reaches the firing pressure and de-strokes to the high pressure standby state. The mold is being compressed with the requisite amount of force and remains so while the timer executes the remaining 30 second countdown. After a full 35 seconds has elapsed, contact tier 1A opens, which de-energizes DCV1 sole A. The spring offset DCV1 returns to the cross connect position. Pressurized flow enters the rod end and the cylinder retracts. When the cylinder fully retracts, we've again returned to the de-energized start state of this system. As previously, the stop button would de-energize DCV1 sole A and depower and reset the timer, even during an ongoing one shot. An operator could use the stop button to cancel an ongoing reciprocation action and return the system to the de-energized start state. Note how by subtly altering our ladder logic, principally ditching the limit switch altogether and making use of a totally different timer function, we still successfully created a system that performed the same single cycle reciprocation action incorporating a necessary dwell period. This being said, there is a notable weakness in this system as currently implemented. Yes, the ladder logic is substantially simpler and it does save money on limit switches but it does necessarily rely on repeatable extension times that may or may not be a reality. Additionally, this system never actually checks to see if the mold has reached the limits of extension as did our previous examples. This could be a total deal breaker if the cylinder ever jammed mid-stroke. In that case, the one shot would still keep DCV1 in the straight through position for 35 seconds regardless if it was doing anything useful or not. This being said, for a simple system with a predictable extension speed, 
the simpler ladder logic making use of a positive edge trigger one shot without a limit switch might still be a workable, inexpensive option. All right, that is it. In conclusion, this lecture took a brief look at several different implementations of electrically controlled hydraulic systems that executed the single cycle reciprocation action incorporating a dwell period. We examined systems that made use of on-delay timers, off-delay timers, and positive edge triggered one-shot timers. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.